Alright, what's up guys? I'm back with another tutorial and this one's going to be on Twixter just like the last one. So, um, I said I was going to do a tutorial on actually how to mask for Twixter, motion mats, motion guidance. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm only going to be doing motion guidance. Motion mats I might do uh, later on in the future, but as of right now, that takes forever. So, for now, we're going to do motion guidance. So, um... I already have a clip chosen. Uh, we're going to be focusing mainly on the knife here. So if I go frame by frame, you can see that it jumps quite a bit in terms of movement. So uh, if you watched my last tutorial, you'll understand the anime is always rendered in 23.976. Um, and anime normally is going to be redrawn every two to three frames. So if you don't know that, I'm going to go over it one more time really quick. If you want to see more in depth on that, go check out my other tutorial link will be in the description. So first things first, get your clip. Uh, you want to pre-compose it so we can call it whatever. We're going to call this Twix one, move all tributes, make sure this is checked, hit okay. And we're going to open up this composition. As you can see, we have the entire clip. Now what you want to do is add Twixter to it. So I have uh, a script, um, so I can just type it in and do that. For you guys, it would be effects and presets, you type it in. Um, so first things first, we're gonna figure out how many frames it takes for it to be redrawn. So we're gonna go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So as you can tell, it's redrawn every three frames. So what we're gonna do is uncheck this, and we're going to type in 23.976 divided by 3. And it will automatically divide it for us. So we don't need a calculator. And now if I play it, every frame will move. Which obviously you can tell this is going to warp. Because that's why I chose this scene. Because I know it, it warps a lot. Um, I'm going to do my usual. I put this on forward. Like I said, if you want to see more in depth on what these actually do. Go check out my other tutorial. Um, so now that we have this done, we have the normal clip, twixtered, every frame moves, and what you want to do is, first thing, save, if you ever mask, you always want to save, so all this tutorial, alright, so we have this, and what you want to do is first start off by masking whatever the issue is, so if, for example, right now, with all these jumps, this is going to be motion guidance mask which is what we're going to do uh for you obviously it varies on the scene uh you can actually do entire people it doesn't really matter but for now really all i need to do is the knife and the hand nothing really, really else needs it so what we're going to do is we're going to hit g and you want to go ahead and mask out the first frame of whatever you're trying to guide the twixter to um basically hide the warps so uh, I'm going to go ahead and speed this up really fast um, for you guys once you're done. Make sure you mask out the entire thing. Don't do a sloppy. The sloppier it is, the worse it will warp. Well, the worse results you'll get, rather, I should say. So we're going to speed this up. Alright, so as you can see, we have the first frame done of the mask. So, yes, you cannot see anything else at the moment, but what we're going to do is we're going to first click this main background layer settings and make sure you apply this one first. And what we're going to do, uh, so we can actually see what we're going to be masking, we're going to change the masking mode to none. And the mask is still there, it's just that you can see everything because it doesn't have any properties. So if I do subtract, you're going to see everything, but what do we mask? Add, subtracts everything. So we're going to set this to none. Then you want to do is click the drop down arrow on the mask, click mask path. And this is when the fun begins. So you can disable Twixter now. And what you do is you go forward, find the next frame. Okay. And... You want to basically have all the points remask the frame. You cannot delete any, you can't add any. 
And this is the part where I told you that you cannot have too many and you cannot have too little. So we're just going to go ahead and do this. And you want to do this for the entire clip. So um, I'm just going to cut to there because I'm sure you guys don't want to see me do this. So, All right, and we're back. I am now done masking. So as you can see, uh, I did this a little bit fast. Um, it's really early in the morning. I want to go to sleep. Uh, also, I mean, this is just giving you the general idea on what to do. So as you can see, every new frame is masked. all the way through and then right here is the excess stuff I mean it doesn't really matter so as you can see this entire clip so without doing the masks what we're gonna do is just use this as an example so we're gonna let this pre-render and like I said the outcome will vary also I didn't really spend too much time on this um, I know I told you you know to actually spend time on it but like I said this is just giving you the idea we're not here for perfection, but see how this warps quite a bit with the knife. However, with the, the masking, so we'll just choose both of our masks and this is what it looks like now. I just chose not to mask the rest of this part out because I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but you get the idea of how to mask. Uh, as you can see, there's quite a big difference. Um, Maybe next video I'll go over alternative motion source and motion mats. Uh, if you have any questions or need help, uh, I do have a Discord server literally just for learning. Um, link will be in the description and I'm out.